Hey guys. So I recently talked about the protein issue when it comes to plant milks, how only a few options have comparable amounts of protein to cow's milk, and yet they're all marketed as healthy alternatives to dairy. I talked about how this was particularly concerning for kids and the potential for vegan parents to give these uh, very low protein milks to their children, and it's why dietetic organizations recommend only full fat soy milk as an alternative to cow's milk for toddlers. Point is, I want to talk about plant milks again, and another potential problem with plant milks, and this time it's a problem that virtually all of them have, iodine. Iodine is an essential nutrient, which means that we have to get it from our food or from like a supplement. Uh, it's important for normal thyroid function. Also, if you are iodine deficient during pregnancy, your child could suffer from severe brain damage. Plants are not good sources of iodine, so a vegan diet that does not include supplementation will not contain enough. Now, one of the ways that most people get their iodine is actually from cow's milk. The cow's feed is supplemented with it, and the milking equipment is cleaned with it. So kind of a good thing to remember the next time someone tells you that animal products are natural. Plant milks, however, and as you've probably already guessed, contain virtually no iodine. This recent study found that of 47 plant milks available in the UK, only three were fortified with iodine. The average glass of non-dairy milk contained only two micrograms of iodine compared with 70 micrograms in cow's milk. This study on non-dairy milk sold in the US had similar results. All of the milks had very little iodine. For instance, Silk Original Soy Milk contained only 3.6 micrograms per 8.4 ounces. As the Vegan RD writes, this is not a big deal for vegan adults. Just eat some iodized salt every day or take a supplement. Many multis contain iodine. The same goes for pregnant and breastfeeding women who need a bit more iodine. A good prenatal should contain about 150 micrograms, making it easy to get enough. For vegan kids, especially toddlers who can't chew very well, it can be a little bit trickier. Iodized salt isn't a reliable or a good option since kids shouldn't be given a lot of salt. There are kid multis that contain iodine, like Vegalife, but they're often in either gummy or chewable form. Now you could smash the chewable into powder and like mix it with their food, probably just a bite of food to make sure they get it all, assuming they don't mind the taste. But honestly, what we've found to be the easiest for us is just to buy a liquid version of potassium iodide and then add that to baby soy milk, since we already do that with vitamin D and DHA anyway. For those wondering about seaweed for either adults or for kids as an iodine source, it probably isn't the best option given that the amounts that they contain, the amount of iodine, it varies pretty wildly. The British plant milk study included two samples that had added sea vegetables in their ingredients. Both were still low in iodine. In contrast, batches of soy milk fortified with the sea vegetable kombu were taken off the market in Australia and New Zealand several years ago because of dangerously high iodine contents. This doesn't mean you shouldn't consume sea vegetables, but it's probably wise to limit them to a few servings per week and to not depend on them for iodine. Avoid iodine supplements that are made from kelp for the same reasons. The potassium iodide form is safer, not to mention cheaper. As I argued in the protein plant milk video that I mentioned earlier, there is a level of expectation that people have when they are buying non-dairy milks. You know, they expect it to be healthier than cow's milk, or at least comparable. They don't expect it to be lacking, totally lacking in a vital nutrient. And iodine is pretty unique because it's not something that I think a lot of people think about. It's not even something that's really talked about a whole lot. For instance, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, they don't even mention it on their Feeding Vegetarian and Vegan Kids Infants and Toddlers page. And on the VRG's Feeding Vegan Kids page, an otherwise really useful resource, they don't mention it either. So hopefully plant milk companies like Silk and Almond Breeze will take these results seriously and start fortifying their milks with iodine. In the meantime, we will have to do the supplementing ourselves, either with iodized salt, obviously that's the easiest way for adults, uh, with a multi or with individual potassium iodide supplements. Luckily, it's really cheap. The last thing I'll say is that I know that this kind of stuff can be annoying if you're vegan. You know, it, it seems like 
everyone and their mom is <laughs> looking to say something bad about veganism and vegan foods and that, you know, a vegan diet is unhealthy. And this seems like one more thing that's like, ha ha ha, I knew it. I knew vegan diets were deficient, right? And so I, I understand that it can, it can be really annoying, but I think it's really important. Um, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad that these studies exist. I'm glad that they're getting media coverage because ultimately it means that I have more information and I can then pass that information on to you. And so if you, maybe you've been vegan and you haven't even thought about iodine, maybe you've been eating sea salt, right? You've been eating salt that is not iodized. Um, and now it's like, oh, okay, well now I know. Now I know something I need to supplement for. That's a great thing, right? That's not a negative, that's a positive. We need to know the potential um pitfalls of veganism so that we can be healthier vegans and ultimately better advocates for the animals. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Comments and questions down below, of course, if you want to subscribe, of course, and if you want to support the channel, of course, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Thank you again, and I will have a new video very soon. It's so hot. It's so incredibly hot but my arms look terrible because I have a problem where if there are bumps, like my keratosis pilaris, I don't know why I'm doing this. If there are bumps and they're inflamed, I, I pick them and it's disgusting. And I just decided to do, the, to do that right before recording. So my arms just look really, really gross. And so I had to put this on, but it's so hot. So I'm, I'm tempted to take it off, but I have to record one more thing and and it's about food. That's really gross. You're looking at my like red bumpy arms and I'm talking about ice cream. I don't know, that would be kind of funny. <laughs>